Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, what I have here is a, uh, a stool. Uh, it's got to be made yet, but um, uh, three legs and, uh, and a top. And this is the fourth project uh, in the Four Ways video uh, series, um, which comprises uh, Mike Peace, uh, Sam Angelo, Tomislav Toshek, whose idea it was that we should uh, every month make a project and show you four different ways of approaching something. Um, so this was Tomislav's idea and away we go. So this is where I'm going with my stool. Um, the leg will go into a, a 15 degree chamfer. Um, the leg will not go all the way through. Um, you know, just to stop it just short, uh, mostly because I'm not very good at joinery and uh, I then have to deal with wedges and that kind of thing. Um, in the bottom, I'm going to expand a collet into these jaws and the bit in the middle will be decorated uh, with some kind of beads. So it's pretty simple. Um, and then on top, I'll have this waist block to start with because uh, I want to keep the whole thickness of the blank. This is going to be the uh, seat of my stool and I'm opted for a fairly thick seat as I just feel like making a, a heavy one. Um, and I want a flat top, so I don't want to waste any of it, so I'm going to stick a glue block on top. Now, when I planed the middle flat, uh, I lost track of where the centre is, so I've got to find centre first, which is a little bit irritating, but um, come in from several sides. That is the centre between the arcs I've got. Now, this is, where are we, 140 mil, and I'm of a generation that doesn't need a calculator yet. So I can, half of that is 70. And slightly more. So that's just needs to sit inside that. This is a PVA. At least I think that's what it's called, Aquadir. I hardly ever use glue. it down. I'm not accustomed to doing these things as those of you who are will be able to instantly tell. Right, that will be near enough and glue seems to have screwed up through the hole in the middle so that's fine. Good. Now I can clean up that a little bit in case it, oh no, it won't affect the chuck because the jaws won't reach down that far so that can just stay there until the morning unfortunately these two slithers had to come off which is a bit irritating because the waste block wasn't absolutely central um, but it now does fit into the dovetail jaws now the first thing is to true up the rim and I'm using a deep fluted bowl gouge, half inch deep fluted bowl gouge, uh, which was sent to me by Adam in the Czech Republic, a very nice gift. Um, and I'm using the right wing there just to true up that. Then set the T bevel to 15 degrees, and that's the angle into which the legs will be fitted. So just uh, drag, drag the wing across to get it true, then the a scraper to flatten the bottom so there's somewhere for the uh, T-Rest 2 to sit against. A little bit more to come off and I also realise I need a, a wider chamfer for the legs. I don't realise quite how wide yet. 
there was a bit of messing around here so this is a push cut to get it clean but I found that in fact the shear scraper did a much better job but when I check next time there was more to come off near the rim and this time I set the depth to which I've got to cut and then take that away with the shear scraping then when that looks about right um, I test fit the leg just to see how it's going to look and realize I'm going to get a probably a better idea of where it's going to set if I use the drill and so I've got to widen that chamfer yet again do that again with the wing of the tool then the scraper and when I think that's flat uh, check that with a straight edge looks fine next is to remark that circumference on which the holes will be drilled next is to set the diameter for the shark jaws which I'm going to be using expanding inside the base and I just need to uh, set about the decoration as well so we'll cut the flange undercut that first so that that's where the chuck will fit in then across the center I'm going to do a broad sweep just to establish uh, the overall curve and then just pivot the tool in and out to get a series of beads and that's so uh, my fingers are acting as a pivot on the rest and the handle is going round anti-clockwise and gentle circles I really go down not quite far enough here it might look very decorative but it's not actually providing space for the chuck which when I try that it won't go down far enough so it won't fit into where it's supposed to so I need to cut off uh, those two beads and the easiest way to do that is with this little square end scraper so this is now going to go on to the step jaws expanding inside and I need to take that off and flatten the top across Where there are burnish marks is where you need to take it away. And there's a little bit of a burnish mark there. I can't quite see it, so that just helps me as a guide. And shear straight that. Of course you might use it to put things on. It's nice to have it flat. Right, so I'm rubbing there and in the centre. getting this flat or ensuring it's flat can be sanding it with a block 
So then it's a question of what I want to do with the side. Ah, so this is going to be both seat and table. So uh, as a seat, you don't really want a sharp edge. Um, so I shall round that over a little bit. Um, I'm looking at the end grain here. Uh, it doesn't look so crash hot. So I'll do that and it'd be quite nice to have it sloping one way or the other. So I'd really like maximum kind of diameter, I think. So I'm going to take a little cut up from the bottom here. Now I could leave some um, decoration on the edge. Uh, no, I'm just going to take the take the the round at the bottom off a bit with the wing of the tool. Now I've also got to think now: Do I want chamfers, or do I want to round it? Um, and I think I'm going to round it on this occasion. I've just got that rounded there. Um, I can probably pull this up a little bit more from underneath. Don't forget the legs are going in fairly close to this and maybe I need to define the kind of working space the bit which will be flat right that just gives it a little bit more definition when you're putting a glass of something on it or a mug of something then you know not to go outside that rim. That's the basic idea. Now, start to sand that, and uh, going to get at it initially with 120 grit in a sanding block. Now the wood is not moving so fast near a centre, so sand across the middle and rotate, and that'll keep it flat in the middle, get rid of any tendency for it to bump up. Burnish there. And a little bit in the middle. That's pretty good, there's a teeny bit of light under there but that's not really enough to worry about. So that is roughly done. Now uh, it's going to the drill press to uh, have the holes drilled for the legs on this line now. I'm sure you'll all remember from your school geometry that the radius will step out around a circumference uh, six times. Oops, I'm going to the outer one. And it would have helped if I'd marked dead centre, which I think is probably there. Anyway, that will be near enough. Now, the grain is running this way so I want one leg uh, right on the long grain and the other two will be about there so we'll start here with a mark so that'll be where the first leg is one 
two. And oops, one, two is going to be around there. And if you're not quite sure about that, you can then step it around from this side. One, two, and near enough is going to be good enough really in this situation. Right, so when I go to the drill press and my jig for drilling these things. So when I got to the drill press, I decided this angle really could be a little bit steeper. Um, it didn't quite line up with the drill, um, with, the, with the flat of the Forstner, um, the, the edge of it. Um, so I'm going to take it back to about there, and that'll also splay the legs slightly more, which is really what I'm after. Uh, and so I don't want to touch anything I can go into about there. So I'm uh, going to do that with the the right wing of this um, half inch uh, bowl gouge, deep through the bowl gouge. Let's use that wing there. And I can screw that up with the, the shear scraper. Also means, of course, I've just I've lost my layout, so I'll have to do that again. Mark that will be about there. Right, so I'll lay that out again, and uh, then we'll see you on the drill. This jig is a bit of a lash up out of. Uh, Odd bits of wood uh, but basically it's a wedge here which has this table at about 15 degrees um, I've set the stop on the drill press so that it stops short of this so there are a couple of pegs here there's a center line here which I line up with the middle of the post and that will now come onto here and uh, I'll drill the three holes. Seems an awfully long way down. That's where I measured. And I haven't gone through. Uh, that's the main thing. So that now goes back on the lathe for um, sanding get rid of the marks and all that kind of thing so here we are with the top done uh, i decided not to sand it um, until i've done the legs uh, i might want to get rid of this little bit uh, this uh, angle here i just want to see how it looked with the legs in place so i'm going to do the legs now uh, and before i do the legs uh, i need to make a little gauge Didn't have the drill quite set quite deep enough. Never mind. Roughing down with a uh, one inch continental roughing gouge. This is 
is when I rather wish I had a longer rest. You can be a wee bit worried that I wasn't going to make the diameter I wanted. Rather got a slight kind of crack around the knot there, a bit of colour which will be the bottom of the leg. And at this stage I'm still kind of dithering over what shape leg to make. And I think I'll probably have a long, uh, just a simple curve. I don't want anything smothered in beads. Uh, I don't really like that. The next thing is to get this cut to length. And fine at the far end. I'll go to 37 and oh, I can go to 38. And I'm going to cut 30 mark 35 mil at the other end, uh, which is the depth the uh, legs are going to go into the seat. So I'm going to mark this, turn this down with the with the skew. Just using it as a peeling cut. And just slot that over until it fits. I can also turn the tenon using a uh, just a straight scraper, using it like a parting tool. So now cutting it with a slight angle to start with. So this is not going in straight on the radius. It's, it's pitched up a little bit, so it's peeling. Right, so that's that, and I'm going to put a little chamfer just there. And then the rest of the leg will come down to the bottom here. Now I want to get the bottom turned off. Ah, I haven't been thinking far enough ahead. I need to cut that a little bit shorter so I remove the um, remove the cone when it comes to the final thing. 375. I want to get that down to uh, a set size. So I'll make the bottom will be 50, 50 millimeters, which is pretty well two inches. Now these have rounded uh, jaws so that it won't grab, and that's basically going to be the diameter for the end. And I need to just shape this. So this is the first one, we'll just uh, get it until it looks about right. And then all I have to do is make another two. And I'll just roll that in over there. Right, so I'll now cut this to the skew. I like to do these kinds of things with the long point down, so I have the tool pointing in the direction I'm going. A little bit of chatter, so just need to hand over the top.
if it's working all right. I'm almost cutting up hill there, which I often give that a go, and I might get away with it, but. Probably not. No, that's picking up. And the grain is slightly off there, so that's going to be a tricky area to cut anyway. Mm, sounds all right, so keep going. Might just take a little bit more out of there. And that's given me a bit of a lump there, so I now need to come down from that side. kind of chubby just in there. Now, what to do with the other end? So I decided on a, on a it's kind of rounded uh, foot, so I just want to take that, this mark, one and one on ten mil, we'll do it, and I'll just round that over. And that's the. Bottom, so that's what I'm aiming for. And using a long point here. It doesn't feel quite right there. a long asymmetric curve. Right, and that can be sanded. And it would be a good idea to test fit at this stage too, just to make sure that uh, your tenon fits your um, into the stool, in the hole in the stool. So this has been sanded to uh, 320 grit and it'll be oiled once the whole thing's put together. So to part it off, just a question of taking away everything except the teeny little bit in the middle. So, 
thumb as a stop on the rest. Skew comes in on the side there. You hold the rest. I don't mean the rest the tool is on, I mean the wood. When it comes off, just carry it. Oh. Very odd noise. Anyway. Oh, it's quite strong. But that will do, that'll get finished off later. So it's number two, when I know more where I'm going with it. Uh, I'm going to get this established first. I'll get the size down down here. So this is a teeny bit small and I can bring that up until it rubs and, and that's exactly where it fits, which is there. So I can take this diameter down to that. good. Now doing the other two legs I need to establish first the length which I've done um, and then the narrowest part which is up in this area and I've found that I've got another gauge which I had for another project um, just slightly larger than that so I can use that gauge to get me down to kind of ballpark area um, and that is about what about? We'll do it more exactly than that. Uh, it's 12 millimeters, uh, 120 millimeters rather in, uh, which is about four and three quarter inches. So anyway, I'm going to measure that, and there'll be kind of fuzzy line there. So I need to get that diameter down first, um, and then I've already established this end. So uh, the, I've already established the diameter at this end. So I need to cut cut the end so it's to length and get down to that diameter. So I'll do that first. One there. Okay. In here. And that'll be uh very nice. Now I'll leave that and come back to it I think. Uh, do the same thing the same routine that I did last time. This is the final leg. Um, the tenon fits uh, fairly tightly. It's squeaky tight. Um, that diameter is established. Uh, that needs to be a bit smaller. Um, I've got some smaller measurements there for what uh, I want to end up with. And so now I need to... This is more or less the right diameter, although there's a little bit of a flat area here. It's cut to length already so I just need to start shaping this using the continental guards down a little bit more and it needs to be 12 centimeters in 120 millimeters that's the right size Using the short corner. 
Now the long point to get the long slope down. I'll just get one of the other legs to remind myself of where I'm going. Basically a long curve. due to be rounded over. That doesn't look too bad. Just keeping the bevel side rubbing against the, the surface. Slight lump there. Coming in flute at a uh, long point up there just because it's easier than coming all the way around here. That long point down now. One eighty grit. So with the legs sanded, um, uh, we have a trial run, trial fit. Uh, then legs are not glued in yet. Um, the seat is about to go back on the lathe to be sanded and my real decision is whether I want to keep this uh, edge or not. Um, and my sense, my feeling is I'd rather have that rounded um, so there's a more kind of subtle shadow uh, on the finished piece. And I'm going to start off on the edge here with, um, with 120 grit. Just uh, take the corner off. One eighty. Just use a block across where the holes are, so I don't catch my fingers again, which I did just now. Just forgot. We had a um, we had some holes there. A lump of rubber would be better to uh, back the abrasive, but I don't know what I've done with it. I've got a block somewhere, but I've just mislaid it. I'm going to finish this off this time with the rotary sander. That will get me across the holes as well. Still a few lines round the back. So just trying to use the lower edge. Don't want the top edge caught in the holes. Likewise, you need to be very careful. You wouldn't want to stick your fingers into one of the holes. You could break a finger, maybe even lose one. Another 320 disc on here. Just stand it in between the holes. Yeah, that's made a lot of difference. Right, that's now ready for gluing up. So it's glue up time and um, the legs, two of them don't fit as well as they might. 
Um, so I'm going to be using epoxy, uh, five minute epoxy, uh, and I've got some uh, wood flour to uh, just to thicken the epoxy a bit. Um, two of my legs don't fit that well. This one does fit, and that will not require any wood flour with it. Now the other thing is that on these legs, I've just made a little trench uh, at one point to let the air out. Uh, it's quite important because I found before that you can ram a leg in and then it'll pop out with air pressure or something. So I don't want that. Now you're not going to see me doing this uh, because I've only got five minutes to do everything and I don't have time to mess around with the camera. So here we are the following morning. Um, with uh, a bit of railway line. It weighs a lot. It's almost more than I can cope with. And, uh, so that's uh, it's about 25 kilos. Um, and that's a bit of MDF. So the stool, um, the legs are now set. Now down here, um, the epoxy uh, needs cleaning up a bit. So I found my bit of rubber and uh, it's a question of then of just going over these bits again. A lot of it, the oil, when the oil goes on that will take care of a lot of it. When I need to get in tight I'm going to use a uh, abrasive wrap around a ruler. I don't need quite all that. So there's going to be quite a bit of that. Anybody who's ever worked with epoxy knows that the more you can get off before it dries the better otherwise it's quite hard work uh, but anyway I've got to clean up the three legs um, I want this portion of the foot flat so the way to do that is to got a um, pencil on its side or you can get a bit of wood and mark the top of that but basically the idea is to draw a line where you can get it all the way around the foot So having got the circle, um, established that, I could take that off with a flap sander uh, in an angle grinder. Uh, but this is a wood turning video, so therefore I'll, I'll do it on the lathe. Uh, we'll get a sanding disc on the lathe. Right, so I've got a 40 grit sanding disc on a faceplate. And I have my shop made table, sanding table. And I need some dust extraction. Just test that on a flat surface, see how it looks, and uh, all good except this one, this one here. Alright, so that, you'll have to take my word for it, looks fairly good. Um, and what I'm going to do next is just to round these over a little bit um, so I've taken away this kind of sharp edge and that is going to be done uh, with the angle drill so it's on non-slip cloth so it doesn't move around too much <laughs> 